Okay, let's talk concrete slabs now. <clears throat> I am on my basement floor plan. If you haven't created that level, you can go right ahead and create that level. Um, and the basement slab it is pretty straightforward, okay? You're going to create a floor system, um, four inch concrete slab. I just copied uh, this one here. I duplicated it and deleted out everything I didn't need and changed my uh, thickness of the concrete, okay? Um, pick the walls, uh, trim the corners. But in addition to that, I picked the outside of the steel columns because we don't want concrete going through the column when we put in our wall sections. Um, it, in commercial construction, you would have a block out around the column so that the slab is not poured against the column. But in residential construction, you rarely have that. Uh, so the concrete gets poured right up against the the uh, the column and it covers up the bolts, which is you know relatively common in commercial construction if your column sits on a footing as opposed to sitting on a slab on top of a footing. Either way, okay. So you want to pick the interior of the exterior walls and then pick the two columns. And remember, when you do floors, it um, the floor family is based on the top of the floor and it goes down. So in this case, we want it at the basement level with a zero offset. Okay, now when you do this, uh, choose an architectural floor, not a structural floor. Okay, because this is not a structural floor. That would be like an elevated concrete floor. Okay, so, and that will take care of that one. And then, um, do you, you, uh, always check things in uh, in a section view so that you can check make sure your elevations are correct okay all right now let's go up to our first floor level uh, these two slabs here a little little bit tricky let me pull my sections over so I can edit that and I think I actually, I can't remember if I did them. They're, okay, they're tied on top of foundation level. You may find it easier to build them. No, you can do it there. Okay, so here's the deal. You can choose the outside of this wall, the outside of this wall, the outside of this foundation wall, but then you got to draw lines and dimension them four inches offset. So that, because this slab is going to sit on top of our uh, foundation wall there around the houses. So you'll do those things. If you tie it to the top of foundation level, you want a four inch offset so that it goes up four inches. Okay, and then once again, uh, check that. Okay, now also in this, uh, oh, and on these things, when, when it asks you, do you want to, you know, join the walls to the bottom of it or the top of it, something like that, say no. If you want to cut out volumes, say no. Okay, we, we're, we're designing this thing exactly the way we want it. We don't want Revit to assume what we want. Um, so we're going to say no to all of those joinings and cuttings and all those things uh, while we're building these floors. Now then, on these two wall types that we've got here, you're going to want to unpin it and then edit that wall type so that we can pull the bottom of the clapboard siding up. Because when they build this, they they would pour this slab before the siding gets installed and they would put a piece of flashing in here against the uh, the wood and they would pour that right up against the the plywood sheathing or the wall and then the siding would go on top of that and come down and cover that up so you want to yeah you have to unpin it so you want to pull that up to the top of the slab okay and that's going to be on 
these two walls and then this wall here also you'll have to edit that this one uh, i just went with it and it's just not perfect because it, you can't change an elevation like that for just a corner of the wall so you end up creating a void and going in there so i just kind of blew by it and went with it okay and then we're doing the same thing for this one this back here it goes to the outside of the three concrete walls and then a four inch bearing right here and adjust the siding up for that also now the fun one <clears throat> the garage slab uh, actually slopes okay same same kind of a thing Okay, so let's um, okay, so editing my boundary. I chose the inside of these two concrete walls that go up and down, north and south. I chose the inside of those, the inside of this one coming across at the bottom. Um, I, you can see this one, so I chose it also because the top of the garage slab uh, back up here along this wall will be at the top of the foundation wall and you say well how do you know that mr reese so well the drawings don't really tell me other than on the floor plan it shows the door going into the garage from the foyer it says up two risers so i know i've got at least you know i got two steps there that i've got to deal with okay so i put the top of my garage slab at the top of foundation okay now and then down here we have a 16 foot garage door that comes through here that has to cut through the foundation wall and we're going to pop our slab down and then we'll edit our wall <clears throat> Um, once we once we've got our slab in place now we're gonna have to come back and adjust the size of this opening probably once we put our garage door in uh, but we need to know the height of it before we can put the garage door in so I uh, I picked this line on the outside of the concrete wall and then drew me a couple of lines here and dimensioned them to be 16 foot long and I took this two foot six and a half off of my uh, my floor plan because that door should be centered I took that 10 foot six and a half dimension subtracted eight feet from it half the garage door uh, and so they gave me two foot six and a half and then did those trimmings then I came in here right here and I applied a slope arrow with the tail of the arrow up here and I pulled the head down to here the slope is one eighth inch per foot but you want to tell it a negative oh you want to specify right here slope instead of heights because we know the level at the tail is going to be top of foundation wall we have no height offset and it's a negative 1 8 inch per 12 inches that means it goes down and and then of course you uh you green check it and then go to your section view to check it and make sure it looks something like that okay so up here back at the house side it's at top of that wall and slopes down into the wall down here you can look at it uh, in, a, in a horizontal section across there and you can see the slope that it's got coming down now how do we deal with that opening so let's go to our south elevation and we'll come right here and let's pick can we grab that wall here there we go i want to edit that the profile of that wall i don't know do i have it pinned let me go back to here okay so it's not pinned at the moment so back to my elevation and i'm gonna go edit profile 
and I'm going to pick some lines. And I'm going to pick the bottom of my concrete. I didn't like picking that, constraining that line. So I picked the bottom of um, my concrete slab. And then I'll go with some trims. And I'll have to pick another line again. Okay, that's fine. And then trims. Okay, and I've got this thing on realistic, so let's go back to shaded. And so now you can see the extents of my concrete slab where it comes through. And I want to cut that area out, but leave the rest of the wall. Okay, and so now let's look at that in section. Okay, so it cut through, and let's look at it in 3D. Oh, come on here. Awesome. That is exactly what I want it to look like. Okay. I think we're looking good there, man. These, these, don't worry. These little things right here will, will get fixed when we start working with our wood floor. Okay, so that's got those things. All your walls, all your footings, beams, columns, and f f concrete floors. That looks like a pretty good deal. If you got any questions, send me an email or come see me in the lab.